Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today, the show comes to you from Milton Keynes in Buckinghamshire. Now, just have a look at this crowd. They brought along their treasures. Look at this. It's beautiful. I mean, what an impressive piece of glass. I think you're getting to like them. I think I might offer you a little bit more. Yeah, they want to lock horns. They want to do business. £220. Another five? Oh, come on. Faye, shake my hand. Oh, you're being hesitant, aren't you? Yeah, uh, pressure's on. Yeah, yeah, pressure's on. Pressure's always on. And they want to walk out of this room with one thing and one thing only. They want the real deal. First up, we're heading over to Helen Gardner's table. Joe, what's kicking off today's show? I brought in a book of woodcuts by Claire Layton. I'm really hoping to get at least £160. I am a brilliant haggler, and Helen's going to have her work cut out today. My haggling skills, I've only been doing it for about 50 years, so I'm just slightly beginning to get the hang of it now. Let battle commence, ladies. You've brought in a nice book? Yes. Um, this is a book of woodcuts by Claire Layton. So these, this is a book of prints from the original it woodcuts. Is, yeah, and it is actually signed by the artist. It was my mum's, and when she died, obviously, I inherited it, so it means a lot to me. And do you like the book? I love it. So why exactly are you selling it now? Well, I've had it for 15 years, and now I live on a boat. You live on a boat? I live on the canal, but it's really a sea boat, built wow. in 1940. Yeah, so I don't really have a lot of room anymore. Well, let's have a look at some of these images. Yes. In the front, of course, we have the signature. Yes. Claire Layton's signature. Now, she was born in Britain, she and was, then she yeah. moved to America. She did. Uh, now, she was working these particular woodcuts, she was working in the 20s when the book was produced. And I know she revived that skill. Yeah. But uh, no, her, her work is, is exceptional. Can you find one in there that you really like? I love them all, but there is one that, I, that is my favourite. An image of a lady who's <laughs> she's sort of asleep oh, on the job. But I, and I really, really love that one. That's it. And I what's the it. title of this one? The Sleepy Fishwife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I particularly like the little one at the very, very back. The little, little mouse. mouse. Yeah, yeah. I think that is the most charming. Yes. That yeah. little mouse know, is delightful. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of images in here, and of course woodcut is a very precise skill. Yes, it is. Because they have to they have to incise it into the wood. Yeah. And it requires a tremendous skill because if they deviate at all, the image is ruined. Yes. Because they're incising it. But you must be sad to see it go, Claire. I am sad, I am sad, but actually I would like to see it taken apart and the pictures framed and on, and on people's walls. I would rather see <laughs> the art. I know that, I know that. Proper book dealers right. would really, would not do that. Right. Uh, but okay. people do. Yeah. They split them up and frame the images. Yes. So, what can I put down on the table to make you sell it to me? Well, let me see. 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 pounds. How about 90 pounds for your book? That's not enough, I'm sorry. No? No. I think it's worth more than that. You think it's worth a lot more or just a little bit more? I think it's worth quite a bit, a bit more. more than that. I'll take the 10 away and I'll make it 100. 120. Not quite there yet. Let me up the offer. There's 130. Now, how close are we getting now? You're getting there, but you're not quite, not there. quite there. Would you like to hear what David has to say about it? Yes. To give you some advice on the matter? Lovely. Well, I, I don't know what advice I can give you. I, I've had a look through it. They are very nice. Limited edition of about three or four hundred. Four hundred and fifty. Your mother was an artist. Yes. I can see the attraction to this book. Yes. Uh, one hundred twenty to one hundred eighty. One hundred fifty to two hundred. One hundred thirty is on the table. It's not a bad offer. I think it's worth a little bit more. I'm going to say she's a generous, canny, canny lady. <laughs> you can ask 
uh, you know, in a polite way, is it possible to have a little bit more? <laughs> and maybe, maybe, just maybe she will. OK, thank you. I like this book. Okay. I'm going to cut to the chase right, here. Okay. I want to buy your book, Good. you know? There's 120. There's 140. 160, 180 pounds. Now, I don't think you're going to get any more than that. I like your book. I want to buy your book. There's 180 pounds, and that's and that's it. That's your 180 pounds. I think you're going to have to get about 240, something like that. 220, right. 240, something like that at auction to bring it back to that. Well, I'm just wondering why there's that little brown one that's just sitting there all by itself like and it's just you've got one over on me you were just <laughs> waiting to get one over on me weren't you if I put this 10 pounds on there do I own this book you own that book thank you thank I you love your book good thank you thank you thank very you much. so much I told you Helen would have her work cut out with me so I'm really pleased I got a little bit more than I was hoping for. I should have just held my ground, but what can I do? I've got a lot to learn yet. Our sellers can certainly teach you dealers a thing or two. There's something glistening on Alice Dobby's table. What is it, Nadia? I bought in a sword-shaped pin brooch that used to belong to my late uncle, and I'm looking to get about £200 for it. I'm definitely going to have a stab at this. This looks lovely. What have you brought in for me? OK, well, it's a diamond and pearl sort of sword-shaped pin brooch. Yeah. Um, I actually inherited it from my late uncle. So it's a man, a male brooch, you think, a man's well, brooch? I don't know if it is a man's brooch. He owned it, but, you know, it's quite a delicate-looking piece, really. It is very delicate, isn't it? And the fact that it's in the shape of a sword and it's quite delicate means that I think both sexes could easily wear it. Maybe. It's, it's very lovely and decorative. Did he have lots of other jewellery or was it just, just a few bits and bobs? He had quite a lot of, of, right. of pieces of jewellery. They arrived in kind of sealed bags, so we had no idea really oh, wow. what we were getting. Yeah. From what I understand, he was quite an elegant man and he was very into sort of clothes yeah. and, and shoes and things, so it, it made sense that he had yeah, quite a lot definitely. of jewellery. So it's gold. It doesn't look like it's got any hallmarks. A lot of early gold doesn't have any hallmarks, right. to be honest. So that's not, nothing to be worried about. I would say that's probably turn of the century, so maybe post-Victoriana, pre-Deco. So, yeah, about 1900, 1910. Mm -hmm. um, it's got lovely pearls, and they're really beautiful, actually, aren't they? They've got mm. a really nice opalescent look about them and um, obviously little diamond chips all the way down, which is really pretty. But the condition, it could be a little bit better, couldn't it? I mean, I think it needs a, a really good polish mm -hmm. and a clean to make those diamonds sparkle again. Um, the clips all in good nick as well, working. So, what would you do with the money if I were to purchase it off of you? Well, there are four of us who are heirs, so obviously oh, it right. would need to be split four ways. Yeah. So depends really what you're going to offer for it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, well, let's, let's talk hard cash, shall we? OK. 50. 100. 150. 200. What do you think about that? I wonder, given that it is an unusual piece, and it's really, it's really pretty, and it has a masculine, feminine appeal. Whether there might just be a little bit more in there for the four of us. <laughs> but that's very even, there. Though it's fifty pounds per person. It, it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a responsibility for my my brother and my two cousins as well to get sure. the best possible for all of us. They've oh. entrusted me with this. Of course, of course. Um, it's another twenty and a ten. 2.30 and that is my final offer. Well, Alice, I think that's a fair offer. So on behalf of the group, I would like to accept it. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. A 
think I cut a good deal with uh, the sword pin and I've got just the buyer in mind too. Nadia's thrilled too. That's our second seller in a row who's got more than she was hoping for. That's certainly enough to buy a nice bottle of bubbly to toast uncle chips. Our sellers are on a roll. Next, Ken is determined to get what he wants too. £60 I'd give for your watch. No. No? No. It's a one-off watch. And unfortunately for Henry, Violette's no pushover for her stunning glassware either. Rapidly shaking your head at me. <laughs> I'm trying hard, Violette, I really Yeah, am. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Join us in a few minutes. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's time to visit David Ford's table, where he's hoping to strike his first deal of the day. I've got a little silver watch on the table in a little case. I mean, it's quite a nice little thing. I'll give it a go. It is sentimental to me, and I want £100 for it. So what have you brought me in here? It's a, a watch that my father owned, and it was donated to me. I see. Uh, it's 1937. My mother gave it, gave it to him when uh, she got engaged, I think, with him. And it was new then, wasn't it? Yes, he bought it new. So what would it be for? Is it a travelling watch? It, it could be a travelling watch because my father was a, a chauffeur and he used to do a lot of travelling. But otherwise, it, you think it's just a, a watch you'd have on a fob or something? Yes. On a chain, on, on, a, on an Albert or something? On an Albert, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And who's this here? The picture is my mother. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's sweet. It's made by a firm called Eterna. Eterna, yeah. They're Swiss, aren't they? That's right. So the little watch does come out of here. It does, it? yes. It pulls out That's like that. Right, so yes. there's the watch. Yeah. And it's ticking away? Yes, it works. And it's silver? Yes, it is. Um, it's all hallmarked. Sterling silver. For modern usage, it's not the most functional thing, is it, really? Um, it's a collector's item. Mm. And it's been nicely looked after when you consider it's been used on a regular basis by yeah. your father. Yeah. But you've decided to sell it? Yes. And why is that? Uh, because I have a daughter, and a, my daughter doesn't wear watches like this. No. Uh, and I want to get rid of it. OK. Yeah. And if you sell it today, what would you do with the money? I'd go on a slap-up meal to the local restaurant that we know in Newton Longville. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to afford a slap-up meal <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK. Uh, I'll get some money out and we'll see where we go, shall we? Mm -hmm. Well, look, there's a start. £40. Yeah. £60 I'd give for your watch. No. No? No. You think it's worth more? Yes, definitely. Definitely? It's a one-off watch. It is? Yeah. I don't personally think it's worth any more than that. You don't? Not even sterling silver? Oh, here's David. He'll give us both some help. Mm. Well, he's put down £60, and that is a safe offer. Mm. I've got various estimations. They start as low as 50 and they go up to 120. On a good day in an auction, could it bring 100 quid? Possibly. Mm. So I'm going to say it probably is in your interest to have a go, go to the auction, unless more money's put down, and then protect it at the auction, and if it doesn't make its money, you still own it and you still keep something which has this great sentimental value. So you're not going any further, David? I don't really want to pay any more for it. I'll have to go to auction, I'm afraid. I think that's the yeah. right decision. Yep, OK. Well, good no idea, way. Ken. Thank good. you. So how does auctioneer William Rouse think it'll do in the sale room? It's one of those things that probably will fetch a little bit more in auction, but I doubt it's going to go crazy and fly away. Now, I have to tell you, the estimate from our independent value was it was only 50 to 120, or the auctioneer 70 to 100. So, in fairness to David Ford, it wasn't that far out. So, the reserve is set at 70. Yeah. Do you think you're going to get 70 or more in the auction? I hope the watch people are here today to buy it. And it's coming up now. We want to get more than 70 pounds. Are we going to get it? Well, let's find out. 205A is a 1930s Eternus travelling Swiss watch, what, 205A, with me, 75, 85. 85. Internet's come in. 90. 
Someone who's got a waistcoat and wants to use that waistcoat is on the internet. One hundred pounds. A hundred. Very good. On the internet, then it's a hundred. All finished and done. Very good. Excellent. Excellent, wasn't it? Yeah, excellent. That right. Lovely. So a hundred pounds. There is some commission to come off that. I make that eighty-two pounds is coming back good. after the commission. Yeah. Any idea what you're going to spend this eighty-two on? On a good slap-up meal. <laughs> a good slap-up meal. Sounds pretty good to me, yeah. that does. There's my wife over there. His wife is there. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> On the day, the real deal was here in the sale room, £100, taking home 82 going for a slap-up meal and a few glasses of wine. Lovely. Thank you. That's the real deal. <laughs> David, I've got £22 extra and it's going in a nice curry. That's an incredible-looking centrepiece, Henry Nichols. What can you tell us about it? I've got a lovely, impressive 1960s Murano glass bowl on my table. I love the shape of it. It's quite flamboyant, really. I'm going to have a go at it. What will it cost in Violette? I hope to get £25 and buy something nice for my great-grandson's birthday. You've brought me in probably what would be one of the most iconic pieces of glassware that could be on any dealer's table. Yeah. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad. How long have you had it? Uh, I have it around six years. OK, and um, how did you come by it? Well, one day I was working in Hampstead antique shop. Right. And I saw it, I fell in love and bought it. Why are you getting rid of it? To be honest, it's a bit big for my house, okay. which is a tiny house. And since I bought them, it's in my cupboard. <laughs> I hear this a lot, people buying really? things because yeah. they love them and they put it exactly. in the cupboard and never look at it. Because I thought if I put on the table, it might break. Yeah. I thought maybe someone else can have pleasure of looking to that. How fantastic. I think that's a good, good way to look at it. We need to establish, first of all, how old it is, where it's from. Sure. Now, it's typical, very iconic of... 1950s through to 1960s glass by a very famous Italian uh, glass manufacturer called Murano. Now, yeah. Murano items weren't marked, weren't inscribed, you know, to tell you it was Murano. They had little stickers on there that, that said Murano. Now, there are also, there are lots of copies. In that era, there were lots of people copying Murano glass, you know, but it's the style, it's the look. And so, in a way, when you call a piece Murano, it's really the, it's the style that you're looking at, not necessarily the, the piece, it's Murano style. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. What I love about this is the fact that when you look at it, it's, it's very reminiscent of somebody dropping a pebble into water exactly. and you've got that the lovely splash. splash of water. And you have a look at the various colours. You've got greens, you've got mauves, you've got this sort of almost these tinges of blue in there. I mean, what an impressive piece of glass. I mean, if I buy Even it from you... Even now, I can really see how nice is that one, but it's really too big for Are me. Are you beginning to change your mind? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't buy it now. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, if I buy it from you, what are you planning to do with the money? With the money, to be honest, my great-grandson's birthday comes soon. OK, and how I old is your great-grandson? Five. Five, what a wonderful age. Is that any, anything to do with the reason you're getting rid of it in case he knocks it off the table? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. So let me get some money out and see if I can persuade you to part with it. Sure. Ten. 20, rapidly shaking your head at me. <laughs> I'm trying hard, Violet, I really Yeah, am. I know. £25. No. Are you very disappointed with that? Uh, you are. Look at this. It's beautiful. I, I can't, you know, I can't deny that. It's a lovely, lovely thing. But I kind of have a ceiling limit for these. I know what I can get for them. Um, it's got lovely colours to it. I was thinking it's showy. maybe a little bit more. I think, I mean, I'll put a little bit more on the table. I really want to pay £30 for it. 
Can you just change one of the five to ten? I'm, I'm going to be very stubborn, I'm afraid, my darling. I'm really going to be stubborn. It's, I think, you know, if I take it back to the shop, if somebody offered me a five a profit on it, I'd take it. Okay. Yeah, sure. We'll find a good home for it. Thank you very much, Adi. So. Thank you. Nice You've been a star. To meet you. And you. Nice work, Violette. An extra fiver. Well, I'm really pleased that Violette got more than she wanted. See, there we go. I'm always paying the right money. Now I can buy a nice present for my great grandson. Coming up, Faye's making eyes at David Ford. Hoping maybe I can flirt with him a little bit. Um, maybe get a bit more money out of him. But Alice only has eyes for herself. Oh, I didn't notice you there. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Milton Keynes. So you must be Jean. Anne and Jean are hoping Alice will be made up with their glittering array of compact cases. I've come here today with a large collection of compacts from a very dear friend of mine. And we're not leaving today with less than £180. 46 compacts? How many does one person need? So, got a couple of compacts here. Just a few. <laughs> There's 46 in total, aren't there? We haven't actually got enough room for, to put them all out on the table, but these are some of the best ones. Can you tell me where you got them from? They belong to a very good friend of mine who sadly passed away. OK. Um, her husband's in a care home. So OK, so that'd be helpful, be yeah. Towards his care, yeah. And did you know why she, she just started collecting them? She liked them and...? Her and her husband used to collect them, buy them. They had them in a cabinet, they had them oh, yeah. displayed. This one, for instance, is a lovely one. It's an Art Deco one and it's got these flowers in it as well. And it's actually... It's embroidery, is it? Yeah, well, the, it's embroidered at the bottom and then I think these are paper flowers. And then, obviously, you open it up and you can refill your... and put your compact in there. Well, why don't you pick out one that you like and talk to me about it? Particularly lovely one, this one. This is a musical one. Um, it's very nice. Yeah. It's still playing its tune. Yeah. That's great, isn't that's it? A, that's a favourite of mine, that one. Yeah, it's just quite, like, just a nice little touch, isn't it's it, nice to have something touch, different? Yes, yeah. Well, most of these, especially the ones here, um, with the still with the boxes, are by a company called Stretton. Yes. And Stretton were the biggest manufacturer of, of compacts in the UK. They produced more than half of the whole of the ones in the UK. These ones are probably more 1980s, aren't they, I'd say? I think so. With the original boxes. These are in pristine condition because they've never been out of the box but then there's other ones where there's like a certain amount of surface scratching mm. and this one I think is actually a cigarette case isn't it because it just it flips up there and you'd have your cigarettes there I think or maybe it's both because it's got two sides oh it is both so that's quite nice there's some here that I think would be worth quite a bit of money and then others and we're talking more pounds than notes so would you like to talk about money <laughs> yes um, yeah, try and find some room here. <laughs> 20, 40, 60. What do you think about that? Not much. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK, the reason I've, I've put that amount down is because I just don't know where I'm going to sell them onto, so I, I'm just a bit concerned, basically, that I'm going to have 46 compacts <laughs> in, my, in my house for a while. Um, I personally think that you would do a little bit better at auction. It's completely up to you. Um, you'll find you know, there'll be more buyers there as opposed to me trying to approach someone. So what I'm going to do is put another £10 down. What would you like to do? I think we're taken to auction. Yeah, you have yeah. to go to I auction. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I completely understand and I hope you have a lovely day out with David. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. Well, Alice's offer was absolute rubbish, wasn't it? It was, and we're definitely going to do better at auction. My offer was rubbish? Well, it wasn't the best, to be honest. 
So it's back to auctioneer William Rouse to see if he can do better. The compacts are one of those things that uh, there's always been a, a, a good number of people who collect them and there's a good selection here to choose from. So I think they should sell at the £150 bottom estimate. We have a collection of 46 ladies' compacts, 1950s and later. You sat down with Alice Dobby, one of our dealers on the day, and Alice said, I'll give you £70. You weren't impressed with that. Uh, I think you're right. There's, there's 46 of them. Uh, you said, no, I'm going to go to auction. Our independent valuers on the day said somewhere between 150 and 200. The reserve is set at £150. It is coming up now. The question is, are they going to sell? Lot 250A, a large collection of assorted ladies, compact 250A, and is it worth starting me £100 for it to go? 100 is bid, 110, 120. It's on the internet. 120. 130 I'll take elsewhere. For all those compacts at 120. It's just a bit short. No interest then. 120, it's unsold, I'm sorry, 120. Right, they've passed them, so 120 didn't quite make it. No. Bit disappointing? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it is. And yeah, I, it's uh, new to us. So yeah, and yeah, also, learn, having the personal you. connection, take them home for the meantime, perhaps in the near future, enter them somewhere else, and hopefully you will get a better price. On the day, I'm going to award the real deal to Alice Dobby, our dealer, and that was at £70. Pounds. Even though the compacts didn't sell today, we are still hoping to sell in the future. In the meantime, we'll carry on powdering our noses. Next up, Mr Ford is about to be dazzled in more ways than one. Well, there's a whole collection of little bits of silver. I wonder where that came from. Is it the family silver that's being sold? Not exactly. Faye, spill the beans. My son bought them from the car boot for around £30. Hoping to get around £220 today. It would be great to meet David Ford. Hoping maybe I can flirt with him a little bit. Maybe get a bit more money out of him. Hmm. Faye, what are you doing selling the family silver? <laughs> it's items my son bought. He was collecting silver for a while. It's been in the loft for a few years. He's just decided he wants to sell it. Oh, so you're only the agent? I am. I'm acting as his agent. I see. Has he told you what he wants for these things? He has. So when he bought them, your son, did he know what he was buying? I mean... Uh, I think he had an idea what he was buying, but he just didn't know what to do with it once he bought it. <laughs> I mean, I'm quite glad that, uh, that it's you selling them rather than him, because much nicer to meet a pretty lady than your son, who I'm sure is very charming. <laughs> but why isn't he here selling his...? He um, would rather I did it. <laughs> he thinks I'm going to haggle a bit. Harder. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, that's the name of the game, isn't it? I mean, what you've got, or what he's got, got some little silver salts, some of these things may be Victorian, got some cigarette cases, not very PC nowadays. Then you've got some little trophy cups, an egg cup. This one's a sugar sifter. You sprinkle the sugar on your strawberries. OK. These things are pushers, and you'd have a, a spoon matching it in date, which aren't here. But the idea is the little child would learn to use implements by pushing the food onto his spoon. That's what that is. Oh, wow. I, I will just pick this bit up because it's a little bit unusual. All this is Victorian and mostly Edwardian. This little sort, however, um, isn't. And it's got some strange marks in the bottom and those marks are actually Hungarian marks. It's a little foreign bit that's crept in there. Um, so it's quite an eclectic little mix of silver bits. A lot of these pieces would really be considered bullion silver, you know. Turned into bullion and then recycled. It's a very healthy thing to do and something else made out of them. I think for the most part, with a couple of exceptions, I'd be looking at this as a collection of bullion silver. And on that basis, I'm happy to get some money out. Good. Right. Has he given you instructions? He has. How much you could accept? Yeah, he has. There's £100. Was it more than that? It was more than that. 20, 40, 
60, 80. There's 200 pounds. It wasn't more than that, though, was it? It was, I'm afraid. Was it really? It was. It wasn't a lot more, though, was it? Come on, Faye. It was more. Two hundred and twenty pounds. I would like some more. I know you would, <laughs> Faye. You look like <laughs> a kind another of another twenty. How about another ten? Two hundred and thirty pounds for your silver bits and pieces. What's your son's name? Billy. Billy. Billy's going to be pleased with that, isn't he? He'd be pleased if there was a bit more down. Of course he would. <laughs> of course he would. And you'd like to say, I did very well for you. I got £230, and he's going to be thrilled, isn't he? I would. I'd like to go home and say to him, I've got £240. If you could just put another 10 down. Life is full of compromise. £235 for your bits. Another five? Oh, come on. Faye, shake my hand. All oh, right, it's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, tell me what Billy paid for them. Approximately £30. For the lot, really. Well, didn't you do well for him? I did. Managed to get £205 profit from a £30 spend. My son will be thrilled. It's first-class recycling, really. It's going to turn into something really useful. And I might make a little profit along the way. That's the idea. Still to come. Alice pictures herself somewhere tropical. She sells seashells on the seashore. <laughs> but it's more like the Arctic on Henry's table. Am I getting warmer? <laughs> <laughs> Cold. Cold? Cold. Oh, blimey. Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Let's cruise over to Alice's table, where Richard is sure his treasures will make a splash. I inherited the shell cages from my grandma. I hope to get 180 for them. Somebody went to Barbados and got themselves a box of shells. I wonder what I will do with them if I get them. So, this looks uh, interesting. Yes. Wow. So, it's a, a collection of shells. And they don't look like English shells. No, it's from Barbados. I inherited them from my grandma. They stand on the sideboard and, uh, you know, my grandsons might come along and... Uh, have a look. Have a look, yes. Yeah, so we decided to come along today. Because, um, actually, it's quite interesting. They don't look like they're English shells. And, actually, in the shells here, it um, spells out a present from Barbados. Quite, yes. So... so they could have been made, obviously, from Barbados and given to somebody on a ship or... Yeah. Because it's got a love um, heart on it, it could have been given to a loved one. Yeah. Well, that is exactly it. There's, there's a heart here that's been made out of other pieces of shell, it looks like. Um, been talking to different people, and it might have been made by a sailor, perhaps, for his sweetheart. Yes, yes. Is what a lot of people's thoughts are. Um, dating it, looking at the hinges, because it's very hard to date these kind of things, because, you know, a shell is a shell, essentially. Mm, quite, mm. You can't really tell. Um, so we looked at the hinges, and they probably date from about the 1920s, we oh, think. Oh, right. So it's quite so, old, then. Yeah, yeah, nearly 100 years old. Yes, yes. OK, well, let's talk about some cash, then. Yes, please. That's why you're here. Yes, thank you. What would you um, do with the money? Uh, possibly a holiday. Oh, yeah? Barbados, perhaps? No, Tenerife, <laughs> I think. Uh, Tenerife. favourite place, north, north of the island. Yeah. It's 50. 70. Eighty pounds. No, worth more than that. Yeah. Or well, quite a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can squeeze to another ten pounds. What do you think about that? No. Okay. Should we see what David's got to say about no, it? I think then? so. Yes. Okay. Well, Richard, what's on the table at the moment now? Ninety pounds. Okay. Not enough, in my opinion. Right. I mean, these were traditional sailors' items. They sent back to their girlfriends, probably in the 1820s, yes. 1840s. Yes. This is much later. This is 1900 or so. Mm. But it's very decorative. My independent value is 180 to 250. 
nowhere near enough there. Unless there's substantially more, I'm going to say, let's go to the auction. Let's see how we do there. Are you going to offer me some a little bit more? I think I might offer you a little bit yes, more. Yes, I think I think <laughs> I think you're getting to like them. I do. I really, you know what? I really like them. I really like They're anything. They're unusual, in, you see. Yeah, you know, I like taxidermy in boxes. I like things in boxes. Yes. They do really appeal to me. So what I'm going to do is put down another fifty. That makes it to one forty. That's quite a good offer. Squeeze any more? you just got to think if you go to auction about the commission. Yes, commission off of that, yes. And I can take... You can have those, those notes in your, in your pocket today. Very tempting. I think I'll accept that. Yeah? OK, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I shelled out more than I expected, but I still think there's a profit in it. I think I pushed her as far as I could, and uh, I should probably spend it on a holiday. If you oh, go on. We can squeeze one more deal in. William, what have you got for us? I bought this charm bracelet in for my grandma today. It really means a lot to her, so I want at least 450. I'm always charmed by a charm bracelet. I love them. They're charming. Henry's a really sharp dealer, so I'm going to have to be even sharper and on the ball. You brought me in a really interesting little charm bracelet. How did you come to own this? Well, it's my grandma's, okay. and um, her husband gave it to me, my granddad. Yep. Uh, he was a joiner, and everywhere he went, he, all, he always got a little charm. So it's just been collecting over the years. How wonderful. Over what period is this? Uh, well, he died 41 years ago. Right. So quite a long while ago. OK. It's, a, it's an interesting little lot. Um, the sweet part is that every single charm obviously means something. And, I mean, do you know anything about any of the individual charms, the, the story behind it? I do know that there's a football player on here, just this one. Yep. Yeah, I know that his arms and legs move, which is why it's one of my favourites. And also the, uh, this one here. Yeah, that was typical of the period. It's, it's an emergency currency, really, and, and that is an old £1 note in yeah. there. And quite often you see on the side of the gold casing, it actually says, in case of emergency, break glass. And there's some quite fun little charms on here. Mm. There's the go-kart, which I particularly like. They're all in nine karat gold. And they would date to, I would think, certainly 1960s through to perhaps very early 70s, I would imagine. We'll check out the footballer. Really sweet, quite nicely modelled. Articulating arms and articulating legs. The hallmark is, yeah, it's across the back of him, but it's pretty indistinct. Yeah. And it always has amazed me that on the tiniest, tiniest bits of gold, if you look through a powerful loop, you can see a perfectly formed hallmark. How they do that, I really don't know. I think my favourite is the football, because it's like solid gold, so it's really got Nice and heavy. It's got a little a nice bit of weight, weight to, to it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's a very pleasant bracelet. And the whole lot is basically held on a curb link chain. But people don't want to buy a ready made charm bracelet. They want to do the what, yeah, yeah. what your grandmother's <clears throat> husband did pick them up from different places and build it up over a course yeah. of time. Um, but it's actually very, very, very charming, excuse the pun, charming <laughs> little charm bracelet. Um, if it belongs to your grandmother, are you going to get a cut of the spoils? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you hope so? You never know. It depends how much I get. Oh, so you're going to drive me really hard bargain with me? Pressure's on. Yeah, yeah, pressure's on. Pressure's always on. <laughs> OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. Am I getting warmer? Mm. <laughs> Cold. Cold? Cold. Oh, blimey. 20, 40, 60, 80, 400. 20, 40, 60, 
480 quid. You're getting warmer. Getting warmer. OK. Would around 500 quid buy it? Allowing me a profit, obviously. I think I'd be happy with another 20 quid down there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll lay a cheeky fiver on the table. 505 quid. 505. Come on, William, deal with me at that. Give an old man a profit. Mm. Oh, you're being hesitant, aren't you? Yeah. I tell you what, you're going to make a mighty fine businessman, I can tell. Cheers, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Could you meet me halfway? As I said, 520. So you want 510? Yeah. Would 510 buy it? Pretty sure. Pretty sure? Yeah, I'm sure. 510 on the table, William. Do we have a deal? Yes. Thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. So come on then, how much would you have taken for it? My grandma wanted 450. Oh no way! I'm happy with that then. Done again. Not quite as it turned out. And he thought he'd make even less on the Murano glass. If somebody offered me a fiver profit on it, I'd take it. Try four times that. Really healthy profit, I'm delighted. Helen's only deal was for the woodcut prints. I like your book. I want to buy your book. So she did. Trouble is, she kept it for herself. What can I do? I've got a lot to learn yet. But you weren't alone. Alice fell for the shell pictures. I think you're getting to like them. So much so, they're on her wall at home. But at least Uncle Chip's sword brooch got her out of trouble. I'm very pleased that I got a good cut. And David Ford was even more delighted with his silver bullion deal. <laughs> yes! Not bad. But final tally, dealers £139, our super sellers £1,417. Thank you, David. What a lovely man. Oh, our sellers have walked out of the door with pocketfuls of cash. And that's so it should be. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. I'll see you. Bye for now.